Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white enchantment deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. So we're playing the full playset of the new Planeswalker, Calyx Destiny's Hand, which can function as a removal spell similar to Banishing Light with the minus 3 effect as long as we have an enchantment to target. And then the plus 1 can help us find additional enchantments, looking at the top 4 cards to find one of them. And then the minus 7 can potentially return all enchantment cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. So pretty powerful Planeswalker in an enchantment heavy deck. Then what other payoffs do we have for playing enchantments? We also have the full playset of Satessan Champion with Constellation, saying whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. So another great payoff for playing enchantments. And then we also have the full playset of Archon of Sun's Grace, a 4-mana 3-4 flying lifelinking Archon, saying Pegasus creatures we control have lifelink, and Constellation says when an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying, which of course will also gain a lifelink for as long as Archon is in play. So those are all the payoffs for playing enchantments. So let's take a look at the entire deck to take a look at some of those enchantments. At one mana we've got the full playset of Alces of Life's Bounty, very versatile one mana lifelinking enchantment creature that we can sacrifice to give target creature or enchantment we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. And in the annotation you can see what protection entails. It means that the targeted creature can be damaged by sources of the chosen color, it can be equipped or enchanted by permanents of the chosen color, it can be blocked by creatures of the chosen color, which can potentially set up a lethal attack out of nowhere, and it also can be targeted by sources of the chosen color, so it can fizzle opposing spot removal spells by choosing the appropriate color. And besides protecting creatures, it also protects enchantments, which can also be very useful when it comes to Calyx's minus 3 ability, so we've got a bit of additional insurance that the opponent won't be able to mess with the chosen enchantment. Then at 2 mana we've got two copies of a Destiny Spinner, which is a 2 mana 2-3 enchantment creature, saying creature and enchantment spells we control can be countered, so great against counterspell heavy decks, and also has a nice activated ability for 4 mana saying target land we control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments we control. So once the ability resolves, the X will be locked in, so even if some enchantments leave the battlefield, the creature will still have the uh, power and toughness when the ability resolved, so it's not going to shrink down if enchantments leave the battlefield. So very nice ability to help us close out the game, since our deck is very good at putting a lot of random enchantments in play. Next up we also have the full playset of the Birth of Miletus, which is a 2-mana saga, saying on the first chapter we can search our library for a basic planes card, put it into our hand, so we're already breaking even on card advantage. On the second chapter we get an 0-4 wall, which can help us protect our planeswalker, and then on the final chapter we gain to a life, so just a nice value saga that also of course triggers Constellation being an enchantment, so fits pretty well into our deck. And next up we also have the full playset of Wolf Willow Haven as a nice 2 mana ramp card, enchants one of our lands, and then the enchanted land will tap for additional green mana as well. Could later also sacrifice the haven to make a 2-2 wolf token in our turn, but that usually doesn't come up too often. So just a nice 2 mana ramp card, nice cheap way of triggering constellation, and we can potentially tap the Wolf Willow Haven for mana in the same turn that we played it, so in some turns, if we don't play it on turn 2, it can essentially only cost a single mana to get the Haven in play, which is a very cheap way to trigger Constellation, of course. Then at 3 mana, besides our All-Star Satessan Champion, we also have two copies of Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which is another enchantment creature to trigger Constellation. It says we can play an additional land on each of our turns, which plays nicely alongside our Saga. Sometimes if we're going off with Satessan Champion, we can draw a lot of cards, so having the extra land drop from the Dryad is nice. And then it can also help fix our mana if we're somehow missing a certain color. Lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Not super relevant in this deck, but can be useful. Then of course we've got our champions, and then full playset of Banishing Light, which is our main interaction besides Skalix's minus 3 ability, comes into play, exiles target a non-land permanent and opponent controls, until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. So another reason to like the Alcide is that it can also protect the Banishing Light from opposing enchantment removal potentially. Then at 4 mana we've already covered the Archon and Calyx, 
And then last but not least, three copies of Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which is also a very nice curve topper for the deck. First chapter says exile target permanent and opponent controls with convert mana cost three or greater. There's usually no lack of targets there. Then the second chapter is not too exciting. Non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two generic mana more to cast until your next turn. But then on the third chapter, return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter or an extra loyalty counter on it. So usually a nice clean two for one can get back one of our key creatures like like the Arkan or the Satessan Champion, or get back our Planeswalker. And then our mana base, very straightforward. We've got all the temples here, for Temple of Plenty and for Temple Garden. And then lots of basics, eight forests and nine planes. So plenty of targets for our two mana saga to search up. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and yeah, Rand seems fine. Double Champion, Arkan, plenty of Constellation payoffs. And we've got a cheap enchantment to go alongside them. I think I'm looking for lands more than dryads, but it is a way to trigger constellation, of course, so it's not the worst, but uh, we'll be a bit greedier here. A Lobstruck Beast, still definitely a powerful card. Alright, so this works out. We can go Haven, and then next turn I can go Champion into Alcid if I want to. Or I could maybe wait and play more Constellation Creatures first. Lucky Clover, so they are a pretty dedicated adventure deck. Banishing Light, not a bad way to deal with Clover. So decisions, decisions. Don't know if they're mono green, green black, or maybe teamer adventures. That of course uh, changes how we want to play things out. I think I'm just going to go Champion plus Tapland. And then next turn, if I draw land, I could go Arkan Alsade, or if we don't draw land, second champion plus Alsade. Alright, they are red green, but they're just gonna play a Lobstruck Beast, that's fine. Now we did draw the land, I could still go for champion plus Alsade, and then have one mana to protect our champion from potentially Bonecrusher Giant Stomps. I think drawing the cards here is more valuable than making the Arkan token. So we'll play it out like this. We've got double Arkan to eventually win the game. Also, I'm probably just going to Banishing Light next turn to trigger Constellation some more. Get rid of uh, one of these Clovers, I think. They might be Teamer missing blue mana. And yeah, something like a Brazen Borrower with Clover in play can be quite devastating. I guess we'll start with the Dryads. And if we draw into a land, we'll still have enough mana for Banishing Light, plus the protection that the Alsate provides. I'm just gonna play the untapped land, play Banishing Light. I think we can ignore the Lovestruck Beasts. I'm a lot more scared of this uh, Lucky Clover. And we've got the land to keep up protection, which uh, seems important. Don't really want to attack, because then I'll be forced to sack the Alsade if they double block. But next turn we should be able to attack past the Lovestruck Beast. Alright, there is a blue and escape, so they are teamer adventures. And yeah, Brazen Borrower, pretty effective against some of our cards. Although the Alsade can also protect the Banishing Light if uh, needed. So a lot of adventure creatures waiting in exile. So let's try and do some damage while we can. Elspeth Conqueror's Death can get rid of the Lovestruck Beasts, can't get rid of the Clover sadly, otherwise we would definitely be interested in that. So I guess we want to look for another Banishing Light or Calyx maybe. So probably start by playing some of my cheaper enchantments, or I could just play Arkan and make some tutus, which is also fine. Don't think we can kill them, but we can definitely get pretty close with these champions. So let's start with Birth, which finds an extra land, and draw some cards. Another champion. I guess I can go champion into another Birth. But then I won't have mana for Banishing Lights. But maybe that's still the play. 
Yeah, drawing cards seems like the better approach here over playing Arkan. Alright, so... Still haven't used my extra land drop, so I can still play Temple Garden and play Haven. Seems fine. Even though we won't have protection from Alsaid available. So there's definitely a drawback. Alright, let's just send in some giant champions. And then I think we'll be okay, even if they bounce or kill some of our creatures. And probably want to keep the untapped lands if possible. Want to keep some of our cheap enchantments. I guess one Conquered's Death can go, one Arkan can go maybe. So now it's my opponent's turn to do something powerful. The old guard's adventure deck versus the new enchantment deck. They're gonna start by bouncing banishing lights, as well as Satessan Champion. Right, so they've got double clover, which means Beanstalk Giant is essentially free. And then the team or adventure deck typically also plays Fae of Wishes, which can search up all sorts of cards out of the sideboard. So what we don't want to see is another Brazen Borrower bouncing stuff. We can probably handle the damage from Bone Crusher. Alright, it's gonna be Bone Crusher, take out Satessan Champion. That's fine. And then they could play the Bone Crusher Giant, I guess. But then we might be able to still get there. And it's gonna be Innkeeper instead. And a Gross Spiral. Alright. So if we can make this champion big enough and give it protection from green, it can attack past both creatures. Or I guess we can just remove all their blockers. That also works. So I think if we just go Elspeth Conquers Death on Lovestruck Beast and Banishing Light on Innkeeper, we get there. Alright, sweet. Enchantments beat Adventure. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a totally reasonable hand. Ooh, opponent's got uh, new basics already. I think I'm holding the Alcid to Trader Constellation. No early plays, that's fine. Strider, fair enough. So they could be Mono Black Devotion. Haven's uh, an interesting draw, so I don't expect my champion to survive given how slow of a start my opponent had. They might have a Murder Strider in hand. So I've got some options. I could play Haven, and then next turn I can go champion into all states, have protection up. That's pretty appealing. Or I could play Dryad now, play an extra land. I think I'm just going to play the Haven. And probably still want to enchant one of my basics in case of... An opposing Field of Ruin. And we'll pass. Alright, Nightmare Shepherds, carry card. And they do have a Sacrifice Outlet with Strider, so next turn they could go Grey Merchant and then sacrifice it to Drain for 6 once again. So maybe I should take a turn off playing Champion and just use Banishing Light on the Shepherd. Which they can sacrifice, but that's okay. Yeah. As much as I want to draw cards here, 
think uh, dealing with Shepard's more important. I could also play Calyx, and then Strider can finish it off, but it's a bit more mana efficient than the Banishing Lights, and we should have enough card draw with Champion that I don't need Calyx to pull me ahead. It's probably fine. And then we also save the Banishing Light to enable Constellation later. And I don't expect them to get rid of my Haven. So they're gonna sack it in response. Also decreases their devotion in case of Grey Merchants. And we'll hold Alsate for Constellation purposes. A remorse, that's too bad. Although we've got multiple good cards in hand. Takes a Banishing Lights. And a Murder Strider just as a 2-3. Alright. So maybe their hand is just double Grey Merchant and they desperately want the Devotion. Time for Champion. And then probably just play Alsate so we can protect it in case I have more removal. Alright, so next turn we should be able to draw a lot of cards. Midnight Reaper is not bad. Alright, so where do we start? If possible, I want to keep up the Alsate at all times. So I could just play both of these. before playing the Archon, and then eventually the Archon will get us across the finish line. Or I could play Archon and pass, and then next turn play some more enchantments, I guess that's reasonable too. And then we'll get to trigger Constellation on both creatures. Opponent's gonna go digging. They also wanna probably just empty their hands so they can start activating Castle. Fanlurker can get rid of a lance. It's not too bad. Although if they still had a Shepherd in hand, then they could sacrifice it to the Strider to exile an extra card, which would be annoying. So no good attacks. And they're just gonna play another Rider out. Yeah, the Alsate is doing a lot of work here, even if it might not look like it. Vanishing Light is excellent. We also get extra land drops thanks to the Dryads. I will go shields down on the Alsate if I play land, play Banishing Light, and we don't have another land drop that comes into play untapped. But maybe that's okay. What card is the most threatening? It's either the Midnight Reaper or the Strider itself. If I target Reaper, they can sack it to the Strider. So they still get to draw a card. So maybe getting rid of Strider is more important. Especially if they find another um, Nightmare Shepherd. If their last card is something like a Bolas of Citadel, then I might regret playing the Banishing Lights. So I think I'll just play the Temple for now and play it slow. Another champion seems great. And then I'll keep land in hand to protect from another Fenlurker. And the Archon can start attacking. Alright, so... If nothing too crazy happens, we should be in good shape. Grey Merchants, kind of crazy, but we've got a lot of lifelinkers in play. And without Shepard to sacrifice Grey Merchant right away. We're not taking uh, another 10 right away. Opponent is going to go digging, but they are giving up some devotion. I'm not sure what they're looking for specifically. 
Seems pretty desperate. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. Next turn, get to play champion. Banishing Light, one of their remaining creatures. I'll draw a lot of cards, make a lot of Pegasus tokens. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We did not switch decks, we're still playing green white enchantments. Just missing the green, but I guess this ends fine. And could be up against uh, Monoret potentially. Yeah, if they have a shock, I don't really want to get the shocked. I might want to save this to trigger Constellation later. So we'll just pass for now, I think. Croxa, alright. So... What do we want to get rid of? Maybe it's just I'll say it anyway. All my other cards seem more impactful. And I don't really want to get rid of lands. When we want to get up to five. It's a bit of a slow start, but that's okay. Definitely have to build around Croxa as well at some point. Keeps card on top, and second Croxa. Uh, I guess now I'll get rid of a lands. Take some damage, that's fine. No proactive play at the moment. But we've got a Banishing Light at the ready. Probably gonna play Arkhan next turn. Interesting, Torch Courier. I guess I can give Croxa haste, so that's kind of the idea. <laughs> Third Croxa. Alright, that does start adding up. Now what? Do I just get rid of Banishing Light? But it's such a clean answer for Croxa later, since... Conqueror's Death can't get rid of it since it's a 2-mana card. But this is a way to get Arkhan back if they kill it right away. Or it's just a land here, I guess. Alright, Temple Plenty, so... Might not be able to uh, conquer Death next turn. But uh, I guess we've got an Arkhan in play at least. Another Temple. So they seem like a pretty dedicated Croxa deck. Shock, so do they have double shock? Yep. Alright, my opponent is empty handed, but um, they've got a pretty full graveyard, so they need one more card in graveyard to get Croxa back. I could Banishing Light uh, Torch Courier, but I think we want to save it for Croxa, so. Birth of Miletus. It's not amazing. Can probably do better. And then I'm hoping they present a target for this. Another Torch Courier instead. So they can sack one, then get Croxa back and give it haste to hit me. I guess we will both be on empty here. The only difference is that we're at six. I could play Haven first, but maybe I keep this for Constellation if we draw Setessen Champion. Alright, so all the Croxas are gone. We're at six, but we've got some pretty good top decks. Rimrock Knights, sure. There we go, perfect. Rewarded for holding the Haven. Two four matches up quite well. And Kalex can pull us ahead. These are all pretty decent. I guess Destiny Spinner. Is the most interesting option. Alright, so we're kind of doing it. I guess I'm okay attacking now. And then we can trade for the Rimrock Knights. A 
Knight of Urban Legions, not bad. So, I guess I can go Arkan into Spinner, see what we draw, and then probably just minus Calyx on the Knights. And Rakdos is not going to have any enchantment removal. That's also pretty good. So let's get rid of the Knights, put it underneath the Banishing Light. They might have land destruction, so maybe that's a little bit safer. Some more Constellation. And as soon as we get to attack with our Life Linker, we should be in the clear. All right, sweet. So, opponent got to do their Croxa synergy business, but uh, we got lucky to draw Satasan Champion right away and eventually pull ahead on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hands, pretty medium, bit uh, land heavy considering these grab lands as well. But we do have a temple to maybe find some more action. An extra constellation creature, Calyx, would also be pretty exciting. For us, not so much. Alright, so Dustin Champion is pretty nice here. Could have kept Birth in hand for Constellation, but we've got another one, so I think that's okay. Envoy, alright, opponents might be a uh, deck going all in with Auras. Which we can punish with Banishing Light and Calyx, potentially, so those are cards we want to draw. For now we'll just play Champion. And the next turn I could trigger Constellation twice, or I could play Arkan first. Aha, uh -huh, they've got their own Champion, so they are green-white. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play Arkan first. Even though if they have their own Banishing Light type effect, they could get rid of Champion before we draw any additional cards. But if they're playing Envoy, I don't think they're necessarily playing Banishing Light, they're probably just playing more creature enchantments. So this is potentially a pretty big turn for the opponent with Envoy and Champion in play. They're going to try and get more value by playing second champion. Alright, so we're both setting up. These next couple turns are going to be pretty explosive. I guess we'll play the spinner. I was hoping to draw Banishing Lights. But I guess... Uh, We'll have to wait for that one. Alright, I can play a Dryad next turn. And for now get in with the Arkan. I guess uh, Sotas and Champion can attack as well. They could have Karametra's Blessing, plus two, plus two. So maybe that's the reason to hold that one back. Yeah, looks like they might be holding that one, so... Have to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Opponent's gonna go off this turn. So that's in training for one mana. And by putting their enchantments on the Envoy, if we do find removal for it, they'll still have their champions to draw cards with. Season of Growth also draws a lot of cards. So it feels like we're a little bit behind. But if we can find removal for the Envoy, we still have a chance, although. Yeah, Karametra's Blessing also gives Hexproof, so they can protect their Envoy. And yeah, it looks like they're keeping that up. So it's gonna be tough, we're gonna need to find multiple removal spells, and my opponent's drawing way more cards than we are at this point. And our draws are not really cooperating. I guess we'll play the Temple first, get an extra land drop once we play the Dryads, Calyx. Can play it this turn if we play the Dryad first. But it's technically a fine draw. So I guess we'll keep it. 
Could also activate Destiny Spinner, but we don't have a ton of enchantments in play. So we're going wide with these tokens, which could be the way to victory. Destiny Spinner could also come in handy. But my opponent definitely is going to have the largest creature in play. And also it can protect it as well, so yeah, they've got plenty of protection between Karamitra's Blessing that we suspect they have in hand, and now the Elside as well. So it's a different approach of the green-white tech, and it's definitely a valid one too. Our version is a little bit more mid-rangey, goes less all-in on one creature. So there's matchups where that is going to be better. But the aura deck can definitely have its moments. And Dryad helps them empty their hand faster. How many cards do they have remaining? 32. Yeah, they've drawn half their deck. So I didn't really expect to win this one. Something pretty special needs to happen. And now that they have uh, Alcid with all that glitters on it, they can also gain a lot of life. So I don't think we're out racing them. Haven's not a bad start. So yeah, this Calyx is just not going to accomplish anything, it's just going to run into a Karametra's Blessing. I guess what I can do is target the All That Glitters on the Alsaid, but then they can sacrifice the other Alsaid in play to give the enchantment protection from green or white. can just plus with Calyx, but not sure what we're hoping to draw into. So this is pretty desperate, but uh, I guess we'll try it. Will be to order by my hand. And then probably target the Haven. Alright, that happens. I guess they don't really want to tap out, fearing another removal spell maybe. Do we have any good attacks? We would lose Arkan, deal 6, doesn't seem worth it. So we'll just pass. But yeah, the Arkan is the way to potentially get there, just by going wide. Not all that glitters, so yeah, they've got all the angles covered here. And they do also have Vanishing Lights, so... And unless they draw their entire deck and lose because of decking, I think uh, they've got it here. 12 power trampling, a lifelinking Alcid. Still have the Giant Envoy as well. So at some point they'll decide to turn their creature sideways. And that's all she wrote. So I think in the interest of time I'll just uh, concede here. I'm confident that my opponent uh, can close out the game. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a nice controlling hand. The birth plays well to protect our Calyx and then two removal spells. So this is all about leveraging Calyx's plus one for card advantage and trying to protect that advantage. Facing turn one swamp.
And a Dreadhorde invasion. Fair enough. I guess we'll just Banishing Light it. And then next turn with Calyx we can start plussing. One of the downside of Calyx with this hand is that it doesn't draw me into my Constellation creatures, since those aren't enchantments. So Calyx and then plus seems fine. Spinner seems okay, although Birth to draw more lands is actually fine too here. Look skyward and receive the gifts of the gods. And then ideally we draw Setas and Champion or Archon soon. Could see Murder Strider killing Calyx. Face with both. I'll block Knight of Abel Legion if they want to spend their entire turn pumping it, that's fine by me. Although I guess I also don't mind taking four. So maybe I should just block Fenlurker if they're going face. Sure. Spawn of Mayhem. That explains their decision. So, maybe I should just minus Calyx here, get some of the pressure off the board. And this turn we get to go Birth plus Dryad, keep Banishing Light for an extra threat, or I could get rid of Knight of a Legion too, but I don't think we want to do that quite yet. If Calyx's plus ability found my Constellation creatures, then I would maybe consider plusing still, but... Uh, Still gonna keep Alcid in hand, I think, to potentially trigger Constellation later. Now I could put Dryad in front of Fenlurker, the wall in front of Knight of Heaven Legion. And if they have another Fenlurker, I can keep the Banishing Light by exiling the Alcid. Could have also kept the land in hand for that purpose. We'll block the Knights. And a Black Lands Paragon. Alright, that was a little bit unexpected. Makes that attack look a lot better. And another Fenlurker. Alright. Not a bad turn for them. Another Banishing Light. I guess now we'll play one out. Knight of Legion seems like the most threatening card here. They do have a lot of devotion for potential Grey Merchants, but so it goes. And then I guess I'll hold the planes now to play around another Fenlurker. They could potentially, with an extra land, kill Calyx by attacking Calyx with everyone, but then they also lose a creature to the Dryad block. Castle's not a bad land to have. Probably still block Paragon, even though they could have another one to give it Death Touch. But I kind of expect them to just pump Fenlurker. Finish off Calyx. Alright, we're just waiting for a Constellation card and then we can kind of go off. Still keep an extra card in hand. Karn's Bastion. And a Midnight Reaper. Another Dryad. Tempted to just hold this since it's not doing a whole lot in play. And if we do find a Constellation card then the extra enchantment could be valuable. So we've got a short window here to find a Constellation card and then we'll be okay. If we fail to do so then the castle's gonna run away with the game. Alright, that's also not a bad card. Can eventually get Calyx back. Get rid of the Midnight Reaper. Yeah. 
And one of the reasons I like Destiny Spinner so much in this deck is that we can find that one with Calyx and it can still act as a win condition on its own if we've got enough enchantments in play. So they can pump Fenlurker twice, so still fine to block it with the Dried, I think. Not sure what the plan is there. I guess they wanted to enable Spawn of Mayhem. Alright, there we go. So, their Murderous Rider costs two more, so they can still potentially kill Champion in response to my first enchantments. But at the very least, we'll get a little bit of value. And I guess with Dried in play, I shouldn't uh, manually tap too much. Since uh, we can tap our planes for green mana too. So spawn is gone. Extra champion. Alright, so now we're hitting our stride. Could have attacked with the dried there. Maybe you should have. To punish their castle activation some more. But we should be able to take control of this game. Yeah, given that we're gonna get a Calyx next turn, which can find an enchantment, I think we still keep champion. That's the final Thunderker. Arkhan's great too. And a Haven will do just fine. So let's see, six, seven mana. Could just play the two constellation creatures. And then we'll get our value next turn. But now I don't think we have a great attack. Paragon end of turn. Just to empty their hand for castle. So Grey Merchant here would hurt, that's for sure. But if we can get Arkhan going, we should be okay. It's gonna be a Knight of Evan Legion instead. And my opponent concedes, yeah. Too far behind knowing about the Haven in hand. Alright, so that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.